If you could recall my old FM transmitter tutorial, you may have noticed I love using presensitized PCBs. It's an awesome type of PCB that requires a fluorescent lamp and a kitchen timer for photo exposure. Years later, I built an automated exposure box for getting much more consistent results in doing home fabrication of presensitized PCBs. This device is simple to use and is equipped with exposure control and an automated countdown timer. An LCD displays all the settings and the time remaining for exposure. Once the time runs out, it turns off the light source and prevents you from having overexposed PCBs. If you want to learn how to build quick and easy high-quality PCBs at home, feel free to watch my comprehensive tutorial on single-sided PCB fabrication. Here are the things that you will need. You can find them from the links from the descriptions below. The main components of this project is an Arduino Nano and some LED strips. To reduce the work in making a wooden enclosure, I decided to use an Orokan plastic container. The next step would be building an evenly lit light source. I ran into a problem with my container slid as it doesn't have a flat surface. So I decided to cut a rectangular piece of cardboard and hot glue it to the lid for my LEDs to rest upon. Use a pair of scissors to cut the LED strips based on your lid's width. These strips can be soldered together later on. Next, peel the adhesives at the back of the LED strips and ready your strips on a table. This would make the mounting process a lot easier. Once done, you can mount each of the strips on your container slid. Try not to leave some gaps, the more LED strips, the better. More LEDs means more light, and more light gives you a faster exposure time. Now solder all the negative pads together on a bare solid wire, and all the positive pads on a separate line. This gives you a 12 volt parallel connection for all your LED strips. Using a bench power supply, set it up to 12 volts and connect it to your LED strip. Try to see if it runs. If it doesn't, there's probably a short somewhere in your solder joints. Now let's prep our makeshift project enclosure. I decided not to use 3D printing because I didn't want to scare other hobbyists from attempting this project. I started by using a ruler and a marker for adding guides and cutting the door. I used the Dremel and a grinding disc for cutting the larger plastic cutouts. As for the smaller rectangular cutouts, I used the mini drill and a drill bit as an improvised routing tool. I used the Dremel for the LCD cutout and the drill for the potentiometers, buzzer, and button. When you're done with all the holes and cutouts, you can now mount the button and the potentiometers. Use the provided nuts and washers to fasten them in place. Snap on the switch and the DC jack as well. Use hot glue if you must. In this step, you'll need to fabricate a PCB. If you're new to PCB fabrication, you can check on my tutorial by clicking on the link below. However, if you choose to use a perf board, you can download the schematic diagram as a reference. Everything you need is in the file package. This includes the schematic diagram, the parts placement diagram, the Gerber files, the Arduino codes, and the PCB layout. When you're done fabricating the PCB, just follow the parts placement diagram and solder all the components accordingly. I usually use my duct tape as helping hands while I mount the components. I started with the two jumpers, the 10 kilo ohm goes here, the 100 ohm goes there, and the 470 ohm goes right over here. Then I added a 10 kilo ohm trimmer, then bent the TIP31C and PN transistor in place. Next, I soldered a pair of male headers to the Arduino Nano, then snapped it in place. I then soldered all the components using my do-it-yourself Hakko soldering station. And yes, it's part of my upcoming tutorials. Next, you'll need to solder a 16 pin mail header for linking the board to the LCD. Just a reminder, the mail header should be pointing outwards from the copper side of the board. You can push the black plastic of the header downward if you want the LCD to be a bit closer to the board. I also soldered some mail headers as contact points for the external components. This would help a lot in wiring the external components later on. Finally, you can solder the headers to the LCD, thus forming the link. Instead of using screws, you can use hot glue to quickly mount the assembled LCD timer to the enclosure. And that's just perfect. Potentiometers have the tendency to rotate when the nut loosens. Adding hot glue fixes the problem. To make the project look nicer, I added some plastic knobs for the two potentiometers. I then wired everything to the main board. This includes the piezoelectric buzzer, the potentiometers, the button, the power switch, and the DC jack. Next, you can power it up by connecting it to a power brick rated at 12 volts 2 amps. If you want to make it portable, you can connect it to a regulator and some batteries. Then hook your power source to the DC jack. It's now time to upload the firmware. 
bring out your laptop, any laptop would do. You can also check out my review for the Huawei MateBook D15. Anyway, connect a mini USB cable to your USB port and to your Arduino Nano's mini USB port. The Arduino codes can be found from the file package that I've uploaded. Go to the Tools tab and select your Arduino board. I'm using the Arduino Nano. For the processor, select this one. And for the port, select the last port. And now you can press this button to compile and upload the Arduino program. You'll know it's successful when it says Done Uploading. We're not done just yet. We still have to adjust the LCD contrast. Use a screwdriver and turn the trimmer resistor until the text becomes clear. Using it is quite simple. Here's how you use it. First, turn on the power switch. The LEDs should start glowing. When it's all lit and booted, you can now place your presensitized PCB together with your printed layout. For the brightness, I usually just turn it all the way up. As for the duration for LED strips, it averages on around 10 minutes. I suggest experimenting with sample boards around that range until you find the best exposure time that works well for you. The LCD displays the time remaining left. There are also bars below to show you the progress. Once the time runs out, the LEDs will turn off to prevent overexposure. To reset the timer, just tap on the button once again. With this, you get to have more consistent outputs on fabricating your own PCBs. If you like this video, don't forget to like and press the subscribe button. Stay safe and thanks for watching.